Melisandre's returned. I didn't know she'd been gone. Came back with a bastard boy. She's going to kill him. Why should I spare the son of some tavern slut Robert bedded one drunken night? Because he has your blood in his veins. I think Stannis really has come to rely on, on Davos precisely because Davos is the only one who's ever answered him honestly, you know, and who doesn't have his own agenda. So even though Stannis really depends on Melisandre um, for so much of his power at this point, Stannis is a smart man. He recognizes that Melisandre has her own agenda. She's trying to, you know, she's serving this Lord of Light. She's a religious fanatic. And as much as Stannis has come to believe um, some of the things that Melisandre says, he's just not a fanatic. That's not who he is. I don't think he's willing to take the leap from Melisandre has real power, even of a magical sort. Uh, don't think he's willing to take the leap from that into, therefore, everything she says about her God being the only true God and all men must serve him unquestioningly. Like that's a, there's a, a logic gap in there that I think he's unwilling to jump. I never asked for this, no more than I asked to be king. We do not choose our destiny, but we must do our duty, no? Great or small, we must do our duty. He places a great deal of value in the words of this one man who's never failed to tell him the truth. You know, even when it's cost him his freedom, even when it risks his life, Davos is always willing to tell Stannis what he really believes. Well, you came to me now before this boy is put to the knife because you knew I'd counseled restraint. You came to hear me say it because you believe it yourself. There will be no bedding ceremony. There will be if I command it. Then you'll be your own bride with a wooden. What did you say? Tyrion has said to, to Cersei in an earlier episode that he's the one person who tells Joffrey what he really is to Joffrey's face. And Joffrey can't abide anybody knowing what he really is. The reason he hated Sansa Stark is because Sansa Stark inadvertently saw what he really was in the second episode of the first season. And so uh, Tyrion is constantly doing this to Joffrey. Joffrey's constantly being pushed to the edge of, of kind of mindless, crazy aggression against his uncle. And somebody is always having to kind of pick up the pieces and interpose themselves. I'm sure Tyrion did not mean to threaten the king causes him to backpedal um, and, and take back some of what he said and get out of there with uh, his tongue and his head intact. <laughs> A bad joke, Your Grace. Made out of envy of your own royal manhood. I think Tyrion is conflicted because, first of all, he's getting an enormous amount of pressure from his father to uh, not only consummate the marriage, but to produce um, an heir. Uh, you know, Sansa is too young for him, and, and uh, I think a lot of what it is for him really is, is he knows she doesn't want it. What it comes down to is he knows she doesn't want it, that she's dreading this, and he doesn't want to force himself on someone who's, who has those feelings. So um, despite all the pressure he's getting from his father, he, and despite the fact that he's probably somewhat attracted to her, even though it makes him feel guilty that he's attracted to her, he's a proud man, and, and, uh, and he, he hates the idea I think he knows that he would hate himself in the morning if he made her do this thing, and he's not gonna do it. He ultimately decides I'm not gonna do it, and I'll wait until she's ready, and he'll wait as long as it takes, which might be forever. And so my watch begins. <laughs>